Hey, Agent Conf. Thanks. Really excited to be here finally after like those three years of like uncertainty and, uh, and everything. Like excited, like my favorite conference. Uh, and uh, today I will be talking with you about the state of augmented reality and React Native. And I will try to kind of demystify certain uh, things in uh, augmented reality in general for you, as well as how you can use it uh, with React Native and what has changed since like a few years ago. So um, let's start with um, like introducing myself. I uh, got like a little bit crazy with going with the AI creating art for this uh, for this talk. So I uh, like all of the um, like backgrounds and stuff was created by uh, me, Johnny. So uh, props <laughs> to that experiment a little bit with the AI. So I'm a software architect and consultant, and I do a bunch of stuff on a daily basis in like web, mobile, VR, AR, obviously, IoT and blockchain fields. Um, a little bit of AI as well, not getting like too much into it. Probably that's for the, another talk. Let's start with like really brief history of augmented reality, just going like through like where it started, where uh, it like progressed, and how we get to the point where we are today. So it actually started in 1901, like the first mention of augmented reality. It was within the book uh, called The Master Key, and the idea was a person in the book would have like certain marker above their head, telling if the, uh, the, the person character whether they good or bad, which is like arguably is like a sort of augmented reality thing. The real like effort to do augmented reality started within 1952. Sensorama, like the device you just like stick your head inside and uh, watch monitors and it's like, supposedly be augmented reality, obviously not something that uh, um, even close to what we have right now. Then there was like sort of Damocles, like huge device hanging on top of you and uh, would crush you if, if it will fall. That's the origin of the uh, name, by the way. That's why it's called like that. Uh, then AR started to get into like weather broadcasting. Now, weather broadcasting essentially is some sort of AR because we augment reality with like certain features, right? It got into virtual fixtures, uh, first AR markers. How many of you know what AR markers are? Just raise your hand. So, okay, not that much of people. So AR marker is basically an image that you can scan with your device and you will see like a 3D object appear on the image. That's an AR marker. And it's used all over the place when you use AR apps right now. 96 was like one of the first efforts to do that. And then uh, there was uh, AR integrated into um, NASA dashboards and uh, started like effort with um, um, wearable AR glasses, um, it was called iTab, was prototype like before Google Glass, uh, was used uh, by BMW, Kinect, Google Glass, uh, first AR markers appear for some reason here <laughs> as well, it's, it's from the other slide. And um, then it basically get to the point when AR and VR is recognized for as like a business and um, investment is reaching on to, in 2016 it reached 1.1 billion uh, investment in AR and VR uh, fields. Uh, then there was like Microsoft HoloLens introduction and Meta 2 which is mixed reality headset that you put, uh, put in it basically puts like 3D objects in the real world. Um, Pokemon Go, how many of you are aware of Pokemon Go? Come on, come on, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> um, and then um, 2017, Apple announced the AR kit and Google announced the AR core, which is the main, um, main technology we will use today to um, use on our mobile phones to create uh, AR apps or to experience AR apps. Uh, there was also like Magic Leap thing, where it was um, heavily invested. They had like light field technology. I don't know where it will get, but I mean, it's, it's there. Um, so ARKit and ARCore, ARKit is the framework for um, rendering and analyzing AR content in, um, on uh, Apple devices, on iPhones. And ARCore is the same thing for uh, Android phones. Um, so how do we do like React uh, AR with React Native? Um, so there is like a library, it's called, uh, like this, this is a website, Vero Communities, Vero Library. 
And uh, it basically has an engine that uh, uses a AR core and a AR kit under the hood. And it has like real world tracking, plane surface detection, markers, renders, real world effects, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you've been at Agent Conf in 2019, you've probably seen pretty much the same slide and pretty much the same library because nothing really has changed on that front since 2019. So library is still there, it's still working, it still does the job for like cool, simple things uh, in an amazing manner. But AR is way more than that nowadays. So what we can do with uh, Vero library, basically some sort of like casual game experiences. Like the, in this case, like you have like a Tetris that you can like render on like within the real world. And uh, I mean, kind of cool, maybe, yes, maybe not, probably not big business investment opportunity. So, <laughs> so the main question, uh, so before getting actually like into like the main question whether AR is a gimmick or not, let's look uh, briefly how these type of experiences can be created. Um, there is, as like in general in React and React Native world, uh, there is a component, obviously, <laughs> the top level components called Vero AR Scene Navigator. It uh, consumes AR Scene component brought from this library, and different props are passed on the navigator and can be used within this scene component. Uh, now, within the scene itself, you can define a bunch of things. You can define, uh, like, first of all, you define the scene itse uh, itself. You can um, uh, basically subscribe to different, like, tracking of the scene of different anchors. We'll discuss what anchors are in a, in a bit. Uh, you also can define lights, uh, different, like, ambient lights, spotlights, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously, you can define 3D objects and uh, different primitive shapes. And you mani manipulate the, uh, them in a manner you put in them uh, under like, uh, within like certain uh, coordinate system. Uh, you have arrays here with the X, Y, and Z, and um, values here in, in meters in real world. And uh, basically you kind of play around with that. So no editor, just like exper you experiment. Everything, uh, like the good part of it that it's like reloaded instantly on the device so you can kind of play around with it. But there is no like ecosystem around that to like improve uh, your development experience. And um, within like scene content in this example, there is like a plane selector that gives you an ability to select certain plane in the real world and position something on the plane. Uh, so the question is that I brought ahead of the slide. So is AR just a gimmick, right? Is it worth investing? or like what, what it's capable of. So right now we've seen just like 3D content with, uh, like overlaid on the screen. Not in a good way also, it's, it was kind of shaky, right? It was not that good. So let's see what is uh, AR is actually capable of. And once we, uh, we go through this demo, let's actually discuss what each uh, part of AR uh, can give us. So this is my phone and that's, not the reason why I brought the chair. <coughs> so, we have a bunch of things within AR, not just overlaying objects on top of uh, uh, 3D content. And uh, in this example, this is a simple AR, it will basically do uh, things like showing us the plane. So we have the floor plane, and we have these like points floating around. Now these points, and you see you have like more points around the computer and, and like near the bottle, uh, et cetera. So, so these points are basically points clouds. And uh, the, these points are like, ARKit uses them to reason about the environment. The technique is called visual inertial odometry. And basically what ARKit does, it um, combines um, image processing with like feed from the camera and motion of the device to reason about the environment we are at. So we can position things uh, like on the table, in this case is the cubes, and this is just like a simple, simple AR, which is actually possible with Vero as well. Now let's look at the light estimations, for instance. So we have a 3D model here uh, floating in, um, like uh, in the air. And if you notice on the uh, top left corner, there is um, a value of ambient intensity and ambient color that is changing. 
this is the sensor from the phone and the, from the camera getting the actual light and giving me the uh, information about this light. So I can reason about how my scene will look like, and based on that, I can adapt. So I can put shadows in a certain way, I can adapt to the, uh, to the reality I'm in. Uh, there are like bunch of like other things that uh, I won't like dive into, like CPU Im images and uh, stuff like that. Let's look at the background rendering order. That's like an interesting thing. So the, this will give me an option to position something behind the actual real life object and give some sort of occlusion. In this case, it's like really simple. I'll show you the other demo when it will be more precise. But you can see that based on the distance. It can reason about the and like scanning of the surfaces. It can understand there is a chair or something there, and basically occludes certain parts of an object. So it gives you like seemingly like to more real experiences. Uh, now uh, there is like an image tracking and object tracking. Um, I want to show like the image tracking. I don't have like images here to scan. Object tracking is an amazing thing. You can actually scan the object, any object. So let's speak with uh, different other apps. You can scan the object, and then you can uh, track this object and recreate it in 3D uh, in the same exact spot. And basically, you can like, change textures, you can change colors, you can make it uh, uh, do stuff. And this is like an amazing thing to have as well. Uh, point clouds. I showed you the point clouds previously. So that's like the the main technique behind like using AR uh, and like how AR works. Body tracking. Tejas, can I get you on the stage? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> now you can do like a dance or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're literally a robot, right? So do it. <laughs> yeah. So you can do the body tracking. That's part of the year as well. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> there are, yeah, there are a bunch of robots in the crowd. <laughs> cool. We're getting into the future, huh? Cool, let's get to the um, next part. So we have like, anchors, for instance. Anchors is, anchoring is an ability to anchor a certain object to a certain point in the space. It uses like, feature points on a point, within point cloud and uh, basically anchors stuff uh, relatively to these points. Now, there is also a technique called geo-anchoring and the cloud anchoring, which actually saves these anchors of the whole environment in the cloud, and you can create shared experiences, which is also like, pretty cool and enable a like, way deeper level of interaction. Uh, environment probes is, uh, may look like not that cool probably, but um, environment probes is an option to actually get like the full picture, full feed of the camera from the environment and reflect that on the surfaces. So if you want to have like an object with reflective surface, you can get that from, um, from environment probes. And uh, occlusion, uh, I will show you in, in a different demo. And uh, there are a bunch of other stuff, which is not, not here. But uh, the main question is how we do all of that, right? So the main question, uh, the main like answer, how we do that, we do it with the game engine. It's called Unity. Now this is like here we get like in a tricky part. So we're doing like React Native, like JavaScript developers. Like Game Engine Unity, if, uh, how many of you have used or have heard about this Game Engine? Cool. How many of you have used this uh, Game Engine? Cool. Great. So, yeah, I guess like when there's Game Engine around, you just like dive in and try to play around with that. How many of you is do, are doing Unity professionally for your job? Hopefully, it will be more than uh, like a few people in the crowd after this talk, because now you can integrate it with React Native as well. So uh, Unity, uh, the programming language within Unity is C Sharp. React Native is JavaScript. Um, so how do we interrupt between two of them? Uh, and in general, like a little bit about Unity. So Unity has all these set of features and more. And um, features specifically for mob or mobile, uh, we have a really high level like rendering pipeline 
3D tools, uh, visual scripting. That's the part where you can like look into if you don't uh, want to write stuff in like C Sharp and in Unity, you can do actually low, even low level visual scripting nowadays within latest uh, features of uh, Unity. Monetization and AR Foundation. Now, all of like this demo that I've showed you was using AR Foundation. That's a framework available within Unity and is used and considered as a best practice to use AR uh, to create like AR apps. But uh, mostly, most AR apps are created entirely within Unity. And then, uh, if we want to integrate them, that that's kind of a problem. But not. Not anymore. Recent year, uh, like several years ago, Unity uh, opened up Unity, uh, Unity usage as, as a library. So you can consume Unity as a library, as a, as a framework, actually. And uh, you can use it specifically for ER or for the game or for whatever you want. And um, the way it works in like a broad sense of things, we have JavaScript, we have native, and we have Unity as a library. And we have an inter interop. Obviously, there is like a bridge between JavaScript and native. There is also like FFI between native and Unity as a library, but we won't get into these details just yet. So let's look at the other demo. I have like video here in case it won't work. So the first one worked. Let's hope the second one will work as well. So yeah, it's kind of trippy because <laughs> let's go to this slide and yeah. Cool, so we have this screen, it's the screen within React Native. I go to Unity screen, and here I have uh, the top part of the screen is completely running within Unity. The bottom part of the screen is within React Native. Now, let me write something, and you see that it reflects within uh, Unity. So it's also like pretty fast, right? Let's click on something within Unity, and you see that it reflects within React Native. Now, uh, we can also like change colors and do like whatever we want here. Uh, so we also can apply some, some like post-processing effects. In this case, let's just light it up, make it look a little bit like more, more blurry. Actually, it's like a simple experience, so let's just like play a game here. Let's just open a game, just do some running, jumping, and I mean, we're all about robots here, right? So, and AI and stuff, right? So, let's get to the, to the very top. And here we go. So, let's take a good view of like the nebula, whatever it is, this skybox. Uh, so that's cool. We have a game running within like React Native, and uh, I can like go back. But in my case, I actually want to also like see AR. So let's look at the AR, and here we see like a different type of like scanning of surfaces, right? Uh, this is called like feather feather plate detection because the parts of the plane are a little bit uh, like feathered. And let's actually put the robot here. Okay, it will be tricky because I have the cable. So let's put it, let's actually move it a little bit near the table, uh, near the the stool and uh, near the chair. And uh, basically I will stand behind it and you, you can see that it's occluded by the real world object. So basically making it more believable. And this is like the occlusion, right? So I can put it on the chair because this is like the surface. And um, actually, AR can do even more than that. Uh, I can actually scan the whole thing and save it, the whole room, and save it as a mesh, as a 3D object, and apply physics. So that's like pretty cool material, uh, I think, like to, to use for like production, production apps for like certain, certain things, not just you know, gimmicky. Um, I mean, you come up with ideas, let me know, tweet about that, you know, like play around with that. You, you can do like a bunch of stuff with it. So it's, I, in my opinion, it's pretty cool. So, <laughs> thanks. So it's, 
the usage of the of like the library of like the Unity framework. Let's dive into actual code. How we do that? I won't dive into like the depth of the code, but um, I promise you, in the slides that I share, there is a bit of code. After the talk, I will share slides with even extra slides with additional parts of the code. And actually, there is a repo that you can look into and go through like all the process. So I have like Unity View here. Unity View is just a component we will create in a bit, and uh, it has uh, reference. It has on Unity message uh, callback uh, prop, and uh, it sets message from Unity. Here, uh, what I do is basically call post message method on this like Unity View and pass the game object within Unity. So most of you have played with Unity, you know what game objects are. For those who, who didn't, uh, game objects are like part of uh, like objects in the scene that you can like find, interface with, interact with, etc. So the ga I will search uh, the game object by the name and will search for the method on this game object. Uh, in this case, it's called message from React Native. And I will pass the serialized, uh, like the stringified JSON, uh, will pass to the Unity side, and I will have to parse it there. Obviously, like we in C Sharp world, so I have to parse it into the class and like do whatever I like with it. Um, so in Unity, Basically, um, what enables like the whole interaction between uh, native side and the Unity, there are like native iOS plugins. Like the code for them are not in here in the slide; they will be after the talk and also like, in the repo. Uh, so in Unity, basically, what you uh, so you have these iOS plugins and uh, sending message um, is done on these like button behavior. Uh, script, which a uh, side button pressed method, and uh, it calls, uh, oh, again, like code is not here, code will be in the slides uh, after the talk, just for the sake of time, because I wa don't want to walk you through the whole like, C Sharp code. Uh, so you assign script to game object in Unity, click handler um, um, to button in Unity. Now, receiving messages from React Native in Unity, we Pass it serialized message JSON. We need to parse it and we'll receive it from React Native. Uh, so, how do you integrate things? So, assuming we have like the code, we have like the native plugins, we have the library. Now, we need to build a project within Unity. So, in our case, we build it for iOS. We need to build it explicitly in, let's say, in our project that will be Unity builds iOS folder. It doesn't matter which folder it is. It's just you need to be aware of where it's built. Uh, so, you build the project regular iOS project. Uh, the next step that you need to go through, you open Xcode workspace of your React Native project. You, a bunch of steps that need to follow through. You basically add uh, the new generated project within this workspace, so you can reference all like stuff created by Unity. Uh, then you actually need to use Unity Framework, so you will add it to frameworks, libraries, and embedded content. Uh, so later on, whenever um, you build for iOS, uh, it will be able to reference that. Uh, you, you remove Unity Framework from build phases, uh, binaries with libraries, because you want to build it separately. Uh, you have a bunch of you will have a bunch of native code that will reference Unity, and you want to build that in advance in order to, to use that. And then you put them be, uh, above compile sources. Now, important part that one, like, uh, actually part of like, these things won't tell you like in the docs or anything, so it's more, more likely experimenting and um, uh, understanding how it works under the hood. Uh, so one thing that is crucial in any AR development, you need to set up in, inside the info PLS, you need to set up uh, your camera usage description. If you don't set up, you will, uh, the app will crash with cryptic error. You don't know what to do, and you, you will be kind of stuck. So don't forget this part. Not only related to Unity in general, if you like use camera, just add <laughs> that uh, camera usage description. Uh, now, the following steps are really important every time when you build your Unity projects. You are assigned your data membership to Unity Framework. You change build products path to be the actual build folder where your iOS project is built within React Native. And you change native pl uh, plugins to be assigned to Unity, Unity Framework and public. 
and build Unity Framework separately. At this point, you're good. You, you, you do like this every time when you build your Unity projects. You have it on the device that will work with React Native. So uh, in order to integrate that with React Native, there's a bunch of native code involved. So you've seen like Unity View, uh, and it, it was like a module, the native module that, it, that is exposed to uh, the JavaScript side. In React Native, we do it using RCT export module. There was a view property on Unity message that was used. In React Native, we use RCT bubbling event block to bubble events up and uh, basically export view property to be callback. Uh, there is a post message that you've seen that we're using to actually send messages to Unity. And uh, it doesn't matter like all the code here, you get like the whole code after the talk. But here we execute Unity post message, uh, which uh, will eventually send the message to Unity. Uh, do you like bunch of uh, send events to JS? Like this is like things that you can also read through the docs how how to do that. And uh, and really important thing you need to be uh, uh, sure that everything runs on the main thread because otherwise you will get conflicts. Uh, now within React Na Native Unity View, the most important part is this: if you look at the Unity docs, you will see this as an API of Unity Framework to send messages. Uh, from the native side to Unity. So this is the method that is actually used to send uh, everything to Unity to like to find method on the game object. Um, React Native Unity is like custom created uh, cl uh, class that was uh, basically abstracts a bunch of APIs of, uh, um, of like Unity framework just like for the sake of uh, you know like ease of use and. Uh, I won't get through the whole Objective C code here in the presentation. Uh, on the uh, JavaScript side, it's a native component. So you use require native component. You uh, have these on Unity message, and in this case also has uh, styles. And you use it the following way, as we've seen. And to remind you, that's how we send messages to Unity. We call message from RN on like game object or whatever method name you want to call and pass different data. Now at this point you have like back and forth communication and you can do whatever you want. Now let, let, there are like, some cool news. There's actually a library for that. So it's called React Native Unity. You don't need to write this native code. So I just showed you so you will know in broad sense like how it works. Uh, so if you're interested more, you can dive deep into like the slides with like more explanation, and there will be at some point also like I need to write a blog post on that, and there uh, there is a repo for that. I will share at the end of the slides. So cool, right? Um, and um, you don't need to write native code. You still need to do all the setup and uh, build steps. That's that's a must. Now the good uh, you you might say okay developer experience is not that good because I need to build every time etc. But if you build uh, building AR professionally within like Unity ecosystem you have tools uh, for um, iterating in the Unity editor and rendering things on the phone. One of these tools called Unity Mars. It's like subscription based, but it basically gives you an option to just like work within Unity editor and simulate like the, the room and walk in the room based like with the WASD controllers like character controllers and stuff. And um, their like ecosystem is huge. Also Unity has a huge asset store that you, you can use for any 3D assets, etc. But I mean you uh, most of you have seen Unity already or used Unity or like played around with it. So you know what I'm talking about. So you know now how um, actually React Native Unity works. So helpful links are like the React Native Unity. There is the demo code in this repo. The, the, the second link is actually like the, the demo with the, all the, like, the body tracking, etc. It's the official demo, Unity official demo. Uh, so it's, I'm not taking credit for that demo. <laughs> um, if you want to learn more about Unity, but you already probably know this link, learn.unity.com and Unity Asset Store, uh, it's over there. And if you have any questions, I think like uh, we have uh, time for a few, right? Yeah, we have time for a few questions. Few questions. Um, but before we do that, let's give our friend Vladimir. <laughs>
good round of applause. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. It's excellent talk. I appreciated being the robot. Uh, if you have questions, one or two, will you raise your, your hand while you think about it? I'll ask one. Um, this is incredible. Thank you for the demos and the, the occlusion <laughs> and everything. Um, I'm curious, what is the overlap between what we just saw with React Native and like APIs like Web AR? Because that's also a thing. Is there transferable skills? Are the uh, APIs close in Surface or how does that? I would say like there are some skills that are transferable, mainly um, operating in like 3D environment, physics, collisions, uh, ray casting, um, which uh, like bunch of like different like terms in general in game development and 3D game development that are transferable. Okay. Mainly understanding of the environment, of lightning systems, stuff like that. But in terms of uh, developing uh, like for like web AR, um, the main tool that is used nowadays is like, um, uh, well, not even, not only nowadays, but the A-frame was the, the one that's been a while. There is like 8-wall, which is like another uh, cool project that right. gives you an ability to create like web AR. Um, but the problem with web AR is not like 100% supported, to say at least. And um, on the mobile with all, almost all like rec uh, recent phones, you have uh, ARKit and ARCore. Okay, great. So if, if somebody knows web AR, they can build this React native AR stuff a, a, a little bit easier because they, they're familiar they, with it. They understand like the, the positioning of right. the objects and stuff like that. And, and actually like oper to operate within Unity Editor is way easier than uh, in web AR because in web AR, uh, if you use A-Frame for instance, you have like A-Frame Editor which is uh, really basic and Unity put like years and years uh, and like huge amount of money and like yeah. human uh, effort to like improve their ecosystem and, and one of the best uh, game engines out there so there is no like comparison. Okay. Great, thank you. Any uh, questions? If there's no questions, I know you're very hungry so we will break <laughs> for lunch soon. Okay, last chance. Going once, going twice. Excellent. Thank you Vladimir. Let's give it up for Vladimir one more time.